Reshoots are most commonly conducted to flesh out story or character beats that test audiences found confusing or to fix editing issues. But every so often, they'll be the result of actors being dismissed from the project, whether during shooting or once principal photography has long been completed. Rare though it may be for actors to be replaced once cameras have started rolling, it happens for a number of different reasons. Perhaps the director simply isn't satisfied with the actor's performance, decides they're wrong for the part, or the ever tricky creative differences get in the way. Whatever the reason, I'm Ewan, you're watching What Culture, and here are 10 actors who gave amazing performances in reshoots. Number 10. Paul Dano, There Will Be Blood. Paul Dano in Paul Thomas Anderson's epic period drama There Will Be Blood is an especially interesting case given that Dano was already cast in the film in the small role of Paul Sunday. The part of Paul's preacher brother Eli was originally played by Kel O'Neill, who was fired two weeks into the shoot. Though rumours initially indicated that O'Neill was intimidated by co-star Daniel Day-Lewis's intense method acting, and I mean, who wouldn't? He really went to town on that milkshake. This was ultimately dismissed by O'Neill, Anderson, and Day-Lewis himself. All the same, Anderson decided to replace O'Neill with Dano, in turn changing Paul and Eli Sunday into twin brothers and massively expanding Dano's presence in the movie, given how much larger Eli's role actually is. And to say that Dano stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with Day-Lewis, by no means an easy feat, I mean, the guy is literally one of the greatest actors of his generation, is quite the understatement. So perfectly cast is he as the weaselly, insincere preacher who so ill-advisedly crosses Day-Lewis' oil man, Daniel Plainview. Dano should have received a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nomination for this performance, but all the same, it remains his finest work to date. Impressive for a part he jumped into with effectively zero prep time. Gosh, what an amazing year 2007 was for film. This? Zodiac? Michael Clayton? No Country for Old Men? Oh, just take me back. Number 9. Ed Harris, The Truman Show Ed Harris was the sole actor in The Truman Show to receive much awards recognition, scooping a Best Supporting Actor nomination for his terrific performance as the titular reality TV show's godlike creator, Kristoff. But it may surprise you to know that it was the late Dennis Hopper who was originally cast in the role, despite some consternation from both director Peter Weir and producer Scott Rudin, who agreed that Hopper would be recast if they didn't feel he was a good fit once shooting started. Well, all it took was two days of filming for Hopper to be fired, and given that the Kristoff scenes were all scheduled to be shot at the very end of production, finding a replacement was a majorly pressing matter. With Paramount growing impatient, Weir ultimately decided to meet with Harris, and after a meeting the same day, hired him for the job. As a result, Harris only had a weekend to prepare for the role before filming began, including reshooting Hopper's scenes, Yet, according to the actor, he appreciated the lack of time he had to think about the part, forcing him to act on instinct instead. All the same, Harris's understated work in the role remains one of his greatest screen performances to date, lending soul and dimension to a fascinatingly complex villain. And also, just gotta shout out Peter Weir, I love you, what an amazing director, and Ed Harris too, just a greatly underappreciated actor, I feel. Number 8. Scarlett Johansson her. Now, it goes without saying that recasting a voice role is significantly less arduous for filmmakers than one that's in front of the camera, but all the same, in the case of Spike Jones's brilliant sci-fi romance Her, the voiceover role had very special significance. During principal photography, Samantha Morton was hired to voice protagonist Theodore Twombly's AI love interest Samantha, and rather than merely record her lines during post-production, she was actually present for the whole shoot, acting on set in a soundproof booth. However, during editing, Jones decided that Morton's performance wasn't quite the right fit for the character, and so decided to recast, drafting in Scarlett Johansson as her replacement, while Morton received an associate producer credit. Despite the expectation that Johansson would simply re-record the lines over a weekend, she reportedly spent four months working on the film with Jones, who also reshot new material to accommodate the change of performer. 
Those months were evidently well spent though, given that beyond the inherent appeal of Johansson's soothing dulcet tones, she gives a terrifically nuanced performance as an unexpectedly multifaceted character, enough that some even believed her worthy of an Oscar nom despite her lack of visual presence in the film. Number 7. Donald Pleasance You only live twice the Only Live Twice was the James Bond film which finally bestowed a proper fleshed out part to villain Ernst Stavro Blofeld. Also, maybe the best Bond theme? I'll leave that up to you folks, but Nancy Sinatra killed it on this. Czech actor Jan Verig was originally cast in the role of Blofeld. Once he made it to set to begin shooting though, producer Albert R. Broccoli and director Lewis Gilbert both felt they'd made a mistake, even comparing his look to Father Christmas. Broccoli and Gilbert nevertheless pressed ahead, hoping that their instincts were wrong, but after a few days of shooting, agreed that Varric just wasn't menacing enough to play the supervillain. And so, the great, immortal Donald Pleasance was hurriedly drafted in to replace him, reshooting Varric's scenes, save for a few shots of him stroking Blofeld's pet cat, and completing the rest of the role. On top of this, Pleasance brought with him many ideas for the character, including Blofeld's now iconic scarred eye, and though many actors have portrayed the villain over the last 50 years, Pleasance's rendition remains the easy consensus favourite among fans. Although, I must say that Telly Savalas rocked it best for me in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Just saying. Number 6. Bruce Greenwood, The Fall of the House of Usher a quick divergence into the world of TV now, with Mike Flanagan's mesmerizing recent horror drama series The Fall of the House of Usher. The central role of Usher family patriarch Roderick Usher was originally set to be played by Frank Langella, yet midway through shooting, he was dismissed from the production following an investigation into his alleged misconduct with co-stars and crew members on set. A few weeks later, the wonderful character actor Bruce Greenwood was drafted in to take Langella's place, and watching the end product, it's basically impossible to imagine Langella giving as spectacular a performance as Greenwood. Greenwood simply feels like a more natural fit for the suave, loquacious, corrupt farmer CEO. Not to mention being almost 20 years Langella's junior, making him more plausibly the father of Usher's six adult children. If there is any justice in the world, then Greenwood will receive an Emmy nomination for his deeply felt performance, though given that Flanagan's sublime work in the genre has largely been ignored by awards bodies, uh, it's probably not gonna happen. Number 5. Winona Ryder – Mermaids Classic 1990 family comedy Mermaids received general acclaim for the performances of its cast, but especially Winona Ryder, who plays protagonist Charlotte Flax the neurotic 15-year-old daughter of freewheeling single mother Rachel, played by Cher. But shooting actually started with another actress, Emily Lloyd, playing the role of Charlotte, only for Cher to complain early during shooting that Lloyd didn't look enough like her to plausibly be her daughter. And so Lloyd was dismissed mid-filming, and because she turned down the lead role in Pretty Woman of all things in order to star in Mermaids, she filed a lawsuit against Orion Pictures for breach of contract and consequently received $175,000 in damages. I mean, yeah, that's, that's not a great situation to be in. Lloyd was quickly replaced with Ryder, who Cher approved of after watching her performance in Heathers, and while this was certainly a tough blow for Lloyd, given that Ryder went on to receive a Best Supporting Actress Golden Globe nomination for her turn, it's tough to argue much of the decision. Number 4. Freddy Stromer – Peacemaker Another TV example to share here with the part of Adrian Chase, aka Vigilante, in James Gunn's DC series Peacemaker. In the show, Vigilante is a hilariously awkward wannabe superhero who looks up to Peacemaker, and over the course of the show's first season, categorically won DC fans' hearts. However, the part was originally played by Chris Conrad, yet after Conrad had shot five of the show's eight episodes, he exited the production due to unspecified creative differences with Gunn. At this point, Freddie Stromer was drafted in to replace Conrad, and despite Vigilante spending much of the show underneath the mask, all of Conrad's scenes were reshot with Stromer regardless, likely due to Stromer being noticeably smaller in stature. And while it's impossible to judge Conrad's work given we never got to see it, 
Stroma brings such a show-stealing quality and so much unexpected heart to the character, in turn delivering one of the best performances of the entire series. Number 3. Michael Bean, Aliens Between his role as Kyle Reese in The Terminator and Corporal Higgs in Aliens, Michael Bean is a bona fide sci-fi icon. However, that second role wasn't originally his. Nope, when the camera started rolling on James Cameron's Alien sequel, it was the Warriors actor James Remar who was actually in the role of Hicks. Remar was fired from the Tetchy shoot of Aliens shortly after filming began due to issues with substance abuse, which led to Bean, who Cameron had worked with on The Terminator, stepping in as his replacement. Some of Remar's performance as Hicks is still visible in Aliens, but only in scenes where he was shot from the back. In any case, while Rima is very much a capable actor with many great roles to his name, it's tough to imagine Hicks being played by anyone other than Bean, whose chemistry with Sigourney Weaver's Ripley ended up comprising one of the many aspects that made Aliens another genre masterpiece from Cameron, and also why Alien 3 kind of <laughs> pissed a lot of people off. Actually, while I'm here, let me know what your favourite Michael Bean performance is down in the comments below. I'm a big Kyle Reese appreciator, but also I would be lying if I said I didn't love him in Tombstone and The Rock 2. Dude makes a line as simple as, I cannot give that order, reverb and all of that delicious Michael Bayhem. Oh, what a great actor. Number 2. Christopher Plummer, All the Money in the World Ridley Scott's crime drama All the Money in the World originally cast Kevin Spacey in the role of cantankerous oil tycoon J. Paul Getty, but in October 2017, roughly two months before the film's premiere, sexual misconduct accusations leveled against the actor led to him being removed from the film entirely. Rather than delay its release as most expected, Scott hurriedly recast Christopher Plummer in the role, his original choice actually, before the studio requested a bigger name, and so they conducted 10 days of reshoots less than a month before the film's premiere. The reshoots, including a rush order placed on post-production, added $10 million to the film's budget, yet allowed it to quite elegantly sidestep the controversy of Spacey's involvement and still release in time for award season deadlines. Perhaps most impressively of all, Plummer's nimble performance as Getty resulted in him receiving an Oscar nom for Best Supporting Actor, a staggering achievement for a role he had so little time to prepare for. That you'd never know Plummer's part was hastily inserted into the film mere weeks before release is a testament to both the late actor's tenacity as a performer and Scott's apparently unwavering work ethic. And number one, Michael J. Fox, Back to the Future. The frantic nature of Back to the Future's production has been extensively written about over the years, namely that the film's first 34 days of shooting saw not Michael J. Fox playing the part of protagonist Marty McFly, but instead Eric Stoltz. Stoltz, who is a terrific actor in his own right, was cast after scheduling issues prevented Fox from playing the role, but more than a month into filming, director Robert Zemeckis confessed that he felt Stoltz was wrong for Marty playing the part with too much intensity. As a result, Stoltz was dismissed, and by this time it became possible for Fox to replace him as the lead. This required a whole month's worth of Stoltz's scenes being reshot, which when combined with Stoltz being paid his full salary, added an estimated $4 million to the budget while putting the shoot hugely behind schedule. And despite much negativity surrounding the film when it was in production, a tough claim to believe nowadays given how beloved it is, Back to the Future of course went on to become a massive success, in large part due to Fox's pitch-perfect performance as Marty McFly. Like, truly, it's difficult to picture anyone else playing that part. Fox is Marty, no matter that he had to hit the ground running as soon as Stoltz was given his marching orders. And there you have it, 10 actors who gave amazing performances in reshoots. Have any other big examples you missed here you feel are worth highlighting? Shout them out down in the comments below once you shared your Michael Bean takes, and we may just spotlight them in a follow-up list. Otherwise, it would be damn decent of you to chuck us a like and a subscribe. That's all for now though, I've been Ewan, you've been watching War Culture, and hopefully I'll see you around. Bye!